Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going over how to make reptile armor as a new player, which is considered to be pretty great and the minimum viable armor to use in PvP. This armor is easy to craft and way better than most other armor types in the game, but not quite as good as steel and other types that are way more expensive and difficult to make. Many of the players you see in game who are pretty experienced are using this type of armor or slightly better variants, and so equipping it is a must if you want to have a fair fight more often than not when a player tries to kill you out in the open world. To get started, you'll want to head to the Animal Material Librarian near the Butchery Table in town and buy the skill books for Exoskeleton Law, Carapace Law, and Reptile Carapace Law if you don't already have them trained. It might take some time depending on your current skill levels and the requirements for each book, but learn them all one by one and then head out of town. We'll be heading off from Aduli here and that's the best place to be for following this method if you're a new player. Make sure you bring armor, bags and food for your horse and some basic gear including a melee weapon with enough durability. We'll get into why that's really important later on. You'll also want to bring a longbow and a shortbow along with enough arrows and some bandages too. It'll take a while to get to where we're going but we're gonna head pretty far south of Meduli to the same Seder camp shown in my previous video on how to get fast clades XP and gold killing Seders and then head a bit further south from there to get to the southern coast. From there, we'll be looking for snapping turtles to kill and butcher as they will drop reptile carapace, which is what we'll be using to craft reptile armor that will hold up well against anyone. You can also get heavy carapace from them, which makes for even better armor, but you need another lore book to get for that, and we'll only be focusing on reptile armor in this video to keep it simple. As always, make sure to keep your horse's stamina bar at around 80% or higher at all times if you want to be safe. This will give you the best chance of getting away from or chasing down an enemy player that you might run into. You're out in the open world now and far from town, so you could be attacked by anyone at any time and every player you see out there could be someone who wants to kill you. So keep an eye on your surroundings and be ready to run or fight if needed. You might also want to head into the settings and turn on Enable Criminal Actions under the Gameplay tab. This will enable you to attack anyone at any time if needed and can save your life. If a player starts attacking you and is clearly trying to kill you but misses with their bow, spell or melee weapon, having Criminal Actions already turned on will let you start attacking them right away without having to fiddle with the settings mid-fight or let the player land a successful hit on you first. If you do keep this turned on though, do keep in mind that you'll be able to hit your horse or any allies by accident and you could turn into a criminal if hitting any blue player whether you meant to or not. Keep following the path you see here and don't worry if you feel a bit lost at first. It takes a while to learn the map and even I still get lost at times but you'll definitely start to learn the map over time if you travel back and forth regularly. There are faster ways to get to where we're going but following the coast will be easier to do as a new player and will help you avoid getting lost. Just keep following the coast all the way until you get to the same big Seder camp shown in my previous video and once you arrive, take a look around to see if you spot any players. Spotting any players before they spot you is really important and will give you the upper hand whether you want to confront them or avoid them completely. When you're ready, hop back on your horse if needed and keep going along the coast which will start to turn southwest. Then once you get a bit further, like you see right here, start turning south to go over the mountain and arrive on the coast near the sea. Then head east along it. From here, just keep heading east along the coast looking for snapping turtles and kill any that you see. As you kill them, butcher them for their meat and transfer everything over to your horse's bags as quick as you can so that your own inventory isn't overweight for very long. Then hop back on your horse and continue along the coast looking for more. Be really careful here as you'll see a lot of houses around and there are players who live here who will attack you on sight, but they won't all do that. I ran into one guy who warned me about other players killing people around the area which was really helpful but I kept going anyway because I'd already made it this far and needed more materials. I don't know if you have any co connection to Free Company but watch it they're uh, killing horses along the beach dude. As I kept going further killing and looting turtles just like I was warned another player came to attack me and we had a 1v1 fight. He killed my horse then rode away to get off of his and came back for me. As we started fighting I was pretty sure that even though he had better gear than me I'd be able to kill him and right at the worst moment my sword broke and I knew it wouldn't end well for me. Like I mentioned before durability is really important and often not really considered or easily overlooked by newer players. I learned this the hard way so take my advice here and you won't have to. Be on top of your gear's durability to make sure that you don't have the same fate as me when getting into a fight. So of course I died here and lost everything that I'd gathered so far and this could happen to you too but you'll definitely be killed at one point or another out in the open world and so the best thing to do when it does happen is gear back up as quick as you can and stay positive. Don't let it discourage you and go again with a friend or two if you can for more protection. 
I geared up and went out again and this time managed to kill a lot more turtles without getting into a fight. Once you've cleared a big area of the coast, you could head back or keep going further along. To be safe if you're playing solo, you'll probably want to head back before going too far. And when you do, just follow the same path back that you took to get there. Keep following the coast back and kill any more turtles that you might see along the way and eventually you'll go right past the Seder camp again and get back to town. Once you're back in town, you'll want to store your loot and begin leveling up your armor crafting so that you can use the reptile carapace that you farmed to craft reptile armor. But depending on your skill levels, this could also take quite a while. Head to the crafting librarian in town near the crafting stations and buy the armor crafting laminated armor and armor crafting plate armor skill books. These are both the fundamental skills you'll need to know to be able to begin crafting a full set of plate armor in general, but you'll also need at least one more skill book that will teach you how to craft a specific set of armor. There are four plate armor sets in the game, and they all come with a different style as well as a focus on different stats. The mercenary armor set is considered to be the best overall by many players, but you might find one of the other sets more appealing to you, and they all have their pros and cons. The Tendremic Knight armor set will be the easiest to learn how to craft at first as it only requires your plate armor crafting skill to be 40, whereas the mercenary armor set requires it to be 60. So depending on how long you want to wait and what type of gear you want to start crafting first, you'll want to level your plate armor skill to that level. First, we'll need to level up your more basic armor crafting skills anyway. Buy a skill book for the type of armor that you want to craft from the trade broker and then store it in your bank, or feel free to buy it later if you don't have enough gold right now you'll have plenty of time to get it later. Now you're gonna need to get a lot of leather. Any type of leather will do, and you'll need a few stacks of it to level your soft armor crafting skill to 50, which will then allow you to read the laminated armor skill book. Gather the leather yourself if you'd like, by killing animals outside town, or simply buy it from the trade broker if you prefer, and then head to the armor crafting table. Begin crafting as many pieces of armor as you can, and when your inventory is full, hold Alt on your keyboard and right click on each piece of armor that you crafted to select them all, and then click yes when asked whether or not you want to destroy them. I'm not too sure which armor parts are best to make for the purpose of leveling your skills up, or whether using any extra core materials or padding makes a difference, so I've just focused on crafting chest pieces without anything else here, but you can follow along or try something else if you have another idea. Keep doing this until you eventually get your soft armor crafting skill to level 50 and then right click on the laminated armor skill book in your inventory to learn that skill. Now you've learned the laminated armor skill and will need to either wait for it to level up to 50 passively by itself or if you want to level it quicker, head to the trade broker once again to buy the Kurite splinted armor skill book. If you do this, learn the skill book right away and then head back to the crafting table to craft even more sets of armor and level up your laminated armor skill to 50 fast. This time, make sure to craft Kurite Splintered Armor instead of Caladian Padded Armor, and once your laminated armor crafting skill gets to 50, begin learning the Plate Armor skill. This will take a while to level up passively, and you won't be able to level it up actively until it gets to a high enough level for you to begin crafting one of the four sets of armor mentioned earlier. We started off the guide with heading out of town first, so that you can understand what you need to do to gather the right materials, and now that you do, you'll be able to keep gathering materials while you wait for your plate armor skill to level up, so that as soon as it does, you'll be ready to craft at least a few armor sets right away. Wait for your plate armor craft skill to level up enough for you to learn the armor set crafting skill of your choice, and then once you finally have it, begin crafting the sets with cheap materials like bone tissue at first to further raise your plate armor skill. Doing this will make the armor you craft even better with higher durability. Once your plate armor crafting skill is high enough and you've learned the skill that you need to craft the type of armor set you want, head back to the bank to get your reptile carapace and begin crafting as many sets as you'd like. Craft them with added core materials and padding for heavier but better armor, and feel free to use basic leather for padding if you'd like, or more expensive materials like guard fur if you prefer. I'd highly recommend playing around with what you can make using the online crafting workbench simulator at modeldata.com workbench. It's a great tool and you can easily compare what kinds of armor you can craft with different materials and see what might be best for you. Now you'll be able to craft pretty great armor for yourself or your friends and even sell it on the trade broker to make a lot of gold. Anyway, that's all for this video guys, but I hope it helped some of you out there. As always, please leave a like if it did and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next one.